try to draw the resonance structure that is indicated by this electron pushing arrow. Well, we'll redraw. Remember to double check to make sure that you redrew correctly. Here's our initial tail. It's coming from this lone pair, so we need to erase the lone pair. And because it's an initial tail, we need to change a charge. This oxygen started neutral, and it's losing electrons. So it becomes positive, and now we've dealt with the tail, and we can erase it. Now, this head, notice that this head is pointing now to the middle of these bonds. Um, we could say it's pointing to the middle of a sigma bond or a pi bond. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's pointing to the middle of the sigma and pi bonds. Well, you probably figured out that that means we're going to form another bond. When the head of the arrow is pointing between the atoms, it means that we're forming another bond. This head is pointing between the atoms, so we form another bond, which happens to be a triple bond. But the key thing is that when the head is, in the, is between the two atoms, you form another bond. Now, because this is the final head, we also have to change a charge. This is the atom at the final head. It started with a positive charge, and it gained electrons. So it becomes neutral, and now we can erase that final head. Let's check that the net charge is balanced. Here we had a plus one charge, and here we had a plus one charge. So those charges do balance. So here we're briefly dealing with a topic uh, that I kind of forgot to deal with earlier, which is triple bonds. There's not much new with triple bonds. I said earlier that when the head of an arrow is pointing to the middle of a sigma bond, you form a new pi bond. Well, this is basically the same situation. Again, the head of the arrow is pointing to the middle of the bond. It doesn't matter whether you think of this one as the sigma or the pi bond. It's pointing to the middle of the bond. That means we form another bond. When the head of the arrow is pointing to the middle of a bond, you form another bond in that same place, another pi bond. When the head of the arrow is pointing to the middle of the bond, uh, you're going to form another bond. So here we formed another pi bond. So there's really not all that much that's much uh, that's new about forming triple bonds. Now let's try to draw the resonance structure suggested by this arrow. Start by redrawing. Make sure you redrew correctly. Then look for the initial tail. Now this initial tail is coming um, from the middle of the bonding area. So we can imagine that it's coming from the middle of a pi bond. Uh, again, we don't really know which of these is the pi bond and which is the sigma bond, but the key thing is that the tail is clearly in, in between the two atoms in the bonding region. That means that we're not moving a lone pair. We're moving a bond. We're moving a pi bond. So this indicates that we're moving a pi bond, so I'm going to erase one of these bonds. Any one of those could stand for uh, one of the pi bonds. So I'll erase one of the bonds. And because this is an initial tail, I need to change a charge. Now this initial tail is taking electrons away from this carbon. Now in this picture, the carbon started neutral, and it lost electrons. So it becomes positive. Now we're done with that tail. Now this head is pointing directly at an atom. We know that means we're forming a lone pair. We know we usually don't draw lone pairs. And we know that the final head means we have to change a charge. This oxygen started with a positive charge, and it's gaining electrons. So it becomes neutral, and now we can erase that final head. Let's check that the net charge is balanced. We already determined that this structure has a plus one charge, and this structure also has a plus one charge. So those charges balance. So now we've seen how to deal with taking electrons out of a triple bond. And it's really not all that different from taking them out of a double bond. Again, if the tail is in the bonding region between the two atoms, that means that you're going to erase a bond, which you think of as a pi bond. So we simply erased one of these bonds. Uh, by the way, you might notice that this resonance structure is the same exact one we started with. Uh, so in real life, you would never, uh, in real life, you would only draw this one and this one. In real life, you would never go on to go back to what we started with, because that would just be repeating the same structure. The only reason that I drew in this arrow here was just for the practice. I drew this in just for the practice so that we could see um, how to draw a resonance structure when you're eliminating a third bond. Try this example.
Let's redraw. Now the initial tail is coming from in uh, from the middle of the bonds. That means that we're going to erase one of those bonds, which we imagine is a pi bond. This is the initial tail, so we need to change a charge. Well, the atom that's losing the electrons at the tail is this carbon. The carbon started with a negative charge, and it's losing electrons. So it becomes neutral. Now we can erase that tail. This head is pointing directly at the nitrogen. We know that when the head is pointing directly at an atom, it means we're forming a lone pair. We usually don't draw the lone pair, but because this is the final head, we need to change the charge. The nitrogen started neutral, and it's gaining electrons. So we put the negative charge on the nitrogen, and we can erase the head. Let's check that the net charge is balanced. We have a negative one charge on the left, and a negative one charge on the right. So the charges do balance. Try to draw the resonance structure based on this arrow. Let's redraw. The arrow here is coming from the uh, negative charge, which really means it's coming from a lone pair. There's nothing to erase since we didn't draw the lone pair, but because this is the initial tail, we have to change this charge. This nitrogen is starting negative and losing electrons, so it becomes neutral, and we can erase that tail. Now the head here is pointing to the middle of the bonds. We know that when the head is pointing to the middle of the bonds, it means we're forming another bond, another pi bond. So I'll draw another pi bond. And since we're at the final head, I need to change the charge of the atom at the final head, which is this carbon. The carbon started neutral and gained electrons, so it became negative. And now I'm entitled to erase the head. Checking that the net charge is balanced, we know that the net charge on this structure is negative 1, and we can see that the net charge on this structure is negative 1. So the charge is balanced. Uh, and again, like on the previous example, um, in real life, you would never actually draw this resonance structure because it's the same as the resonance structure we started with. In real life, there would be no need to draw this resonance structure again. We're just doing this for practice at working with triple bonds.